everyone to the second episode of the Analytics India Magazine podcast featuring the AIM Leaders Council. Uh, today we have with us the head of analytics at Rakuten India, Anil Banandi, and co-founder and CEO at the Math Company, Shyamdeep Banerjee. Uh, and we will be talking on what makes organizations the best for data scientists to work for. So, firstly, welcome Shyam, welcome Anil Ban. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. So, uh, before we answer what makes a uh, firm uh, better for data scientists to work for, right? I wanted to discuss uh, some of the fundamental reasons as to why uh, employees join an organization and why, what do they look for in a company when they are uh, when when they decide to you know uh, start working for it. So, Shan. Yeah. So um, look, I I I go back to a little bit of theory as well as you know the experience over these years of working with several data scientists, lot of data science teams. I always refer to you know this theory of Daniel Pink. I'm sure most of you have you know heard that of autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Um, I think this whole thing about A and B in my mind um, is key. It is about autonomy. Mm -hmm. It is about mastery. You know, which is which you all talk about. How do I constantly build my skills? You know, while I have learning opportunities and purpose. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we, we talk about salary, benefits, all the other things. I mean, to me, they are hygiene. They, they have to be there, you know, without which nobody is doing, you know, it's not a non-profit, you know, kind of a setup. Right? Yeah. But those are the three key things in my mind that, uh, you know, really make somebody uh, look or get attracted to a particular role or a particular opportunity. Okay. Okay. Aneva? Uh, thank you, Sean. Very well said. First of all, um, I completely agree to this. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of things that we kind of stress upon, which are very high in P and benefits. Very much uh, hygiene practice ram nowadays, right? But uh, given that the world of AI and data sciences is evolving at a very fast pace, okay. If I were to look for a job right now, I would try and apply or look for an organization which has a good technology stack with them. Okay, having a good technology stack gives you a lot of freedom to experiment, to learn, okay, okay. and implement all the cutting edge things that that are there in theory right now, okay? So having a good technology stack, uh, stack uh, having good mentors who have done that, lived that, are all different things I think that uh, as uh, employee, we look up to an organization, okay? Um, like Shan said, there are a lot of hygiene stuff as well, but uh, outside of that, I also think uh, personal development and professional development, okay? Uh, outside of the pay and benefit stuff is also very, very important, okay? So that's why, you kind of tend to work with people that you know, kind of tend to work with people who have proved themselves okay? Okay. Uh, by doing a lot of good stuff in the industry. Okay. I think it's interesting you say that money or remuneration is probably the hygiene because that was going to be my next question. But do you really think that remuneration or salary packages, these discussions come secondary? Uh, because I'll, so I understand that there are other factors as well that influence more. But if the salary package is not, or the remuneration is not to someone's satisfaction, will they join the company? Does that always come as a first step, or not anymore? Uh, maybe, maybe Anirban, you, you you are seeing you know kind of certain kind of audience. I think we are also all seeing that kind of audience. See, if I say that that doesn't matter, I'll be I'll be lying. You know, it's, it's not that. It, it it definitely matters. It mm -hmm. matters to whoever is making a call. But if you look at what is happening? See, this is this is a very niche industry at the end of the day. This is not your broad tech industry. This is a very niche industry where, honestly, in many cases that I see, you know, there are three opportunities in front of me or in front of a data scientist, which are almost equally paid. Okay. Right? So it's, it's not that there is just one of those opportunities which is paying way higher, and therefore I go. Exceptions happen. Let's not talk about exception, but in general. Given where the industry is today, right? It is, it is a sellers market. I mean, you know, demand in general is way higher yeah. than supply. Right? It so it's, it's a sellers market. So now, for a seller, right? If they are getting a good price, and I'm sorry, I'm using this term, but that is what it is. I right? mentioned at the end of the day is a good price. Now, where will I sell? So there has to be something more than price for me to sell. Otherwise, how do I make? Otherwise, I, I you know, toss a coin and make a choice. Yeah. yeah. Right. So if I'm getting very similar price, okay. then if I'm getting completely different price, it's a different ballgame altogether. I've, yeah. I've seen people making 
that call as well but again that's an exception i'm not going to go there yeah there yeah. are people who have joined particularly early stage companies startups yeah at a very very different generation because there is a different path altogether there right but i'm not going there i'm talking about the mostly you know 80% 90% of the industry yeah so there if this the remuneration matters for sure but then you have to think about remuneration can be even across two three different opportunities then what we will look for maybe that's where to look for what tech stack we are working on like what are we going to say yeah or to look for will i get enough autonomy to do my own stuff or, or will i be given tasks right what is my growth path in this particular role people have people have become very smart even i see young people on a day to day basis right like fresh graduates yeah, you know? yeah. what what do you think about that uh first of all we are in agreement because we are from the same industry this is very niche uh, i just recently going through a study and it talks about it, i don't know if i should completely believe the study because any kind of study is dependent upon the kind of people who take the survey but that survey says um, that millennials or people with lesser experience okay have a lot of inclination towards what is the remuneration that is getting paid by okay. an organization okay is it sustainable after a certain point of time in your career answer is no okay then you expand remuneration into pays and benefits okay different kind of benefits i don't even want to go there okay but again is that enough for a person to grow okay is it a good practice can you actually become an industry leader by changing job 20 times by getting x percentage salary hike okay will you will you be recognized in the industry as a leader or somebody who is actually influencing the industry with your ai work I think the answer is no and that's where you have to start looking at different other fact other different factors uh which includes what kind of work are you doing okay. uh, is it cutting edge okay is your work actually getting implemented into a business solution so this balance okay, okay between you doing something very new and innovative versus whether it's getting accepted in the business implemented in the business because at the end of the day any organization which gives you a remuneration also it asks for a roi against you okay mm. the roi that our field in analytics and data sciences can give is the business impact mm. okay so my thing is that yes remuneration is important you will be lying to say that remuneration is not important but over a period of time you also have to grow as individuals look about the roi that you are generating for an organization yeah. you grow organically within an organization okay if you are generating enough roi within the same organization you will grow at a faster rate yeah okay. and that's why the concept of changing jobs because i want x percent salary hike sure does not make sense at least to me uh, yeah absolutely you know i have a few i think look at both of our career track record we have yeah. been very lazy and and staying in one place for very long <laughs> and when we have done decently well right okay? <laughs> no, no i think that's individual perspective or even that autonomy uh, uh, mastery purpose autonomy yeah. mastery purpose amp framework right that identity right from an individual's perspective uh, as well as from an organization's perspective for the values that it stands for how much does identity play a role right so that that would that is my next question you mean your identity in the organization is is what yeah you your identity as yourself within the organization as well as what does it uh, what the identity because you say you work for a particular brand right sure. so feeling feeling having that identity so for example if somebody is saying i work for the math company they are feeling proud about it because of the values that it stands for how much is that important hmm. that's becoming increasingly important is what i think right? i i fortunately or unfortunately have you know the benefit of seeing this industry for almost 25 years now when yeah. i was starting over a period of time this factor that you know kind of who am i working for and what is that identity is that is that an organization is that a company i would like to be you know associated with or identified with those are becoming important and i also was saying that you know i get surprised i get astonished by some of the young guys you know people just passing fresh out of college the amount of clarity that they have in their mind but i i i could think of you know when i was passing out i had you know zero clue you know i was looking for a job right? yeah but now people you know when i interview they ask me questions they they ask me questions about social responsibility you know kind of what are you guys doing about that you know what's about well we are not into the manufacturing segment i'm sure they will ask about carbon footprint 
what are we doing about the environment and sustainability? But that's that's happening. That's that's happening. I'm not I'm not exaggerating to, to a great extent that is happening for the right people. Okay. So so that is also part of identity, right? Do I yeah. want to be associated or identified with this one? And and again it differs, you know, kind of Anirban can identify with an organization which is doing XYZ. Okay. Right? It can be a when we were talking earlier, we learned that he's a sports fan, right? So he would like to be with an organization who is, you know, big time into sports or something like that. You know, I, I can, you know, kind of identify myself with somebody who really is on a growth journey. So our what we look forward to can be different. Mm-hmm. But the fact that identity matters is important and is becoming more important. That is that is more important for us to know. Yeah. That you know, it's not just anybody, right? And and I've seen people saying that no, I don't associate myself with this particular identity or this particular company for whatever the reason. Yeah. Right? I'm not going to extreme cases where there are people who don't work with tobacco companies and you know there are I have seen enough globally. India you know, probably not so much as a field, but globally I've seen a lot of that happening. Yeah no I ask this question because you know what without that uh, this thing so without that organization's pride or working for that this thing or without uh, being feeling, for example, respected, which is which is again a perception, one can achieve other goals like purpose or you know money, but still within that organization you want to feel respected, right? Absolutely. So uh, identity definitely plays a major role, and there are two aspects of identity: one from an organization standpoint, one from an individual standpoint. I want to be associated with an organization which is very stable. Uh, there are enough and more information on social media right now which talks about an organization's work culture environment. Okay, so I basically before I feel pride, I know that okay, if I get associated with this organization, I would have a stable job. I would be proud about what I'm doing. It, even my associate or my close network would be happy that I'm associated with this organization. But uh, then there's a good work culture environment. Okay. That's something that they, they look at from an organization standpoint. Now, from an individual standpoint, the identity thing comes, cannot come overnight. The moment, let's say, I get associated with an organization okay, who is doing very well, who is very stable, has a very good uh, work-life balance, good culture, okay, good PM benefits package, I feel pride. But within that organization, you have to have a little bit of patience to develop your own identity. Okay, okay? And that's where you have to believe in the organization's vision and mission statement first. Okay, If you are getting associated with an organization, it's very important that you follow their path. Okay, You can't be going in the North Pole when the organization wants to go in the South Pole. If, if the two merges together, I think that is where an individual's recognition in an organization comes into the picture. You get recognized in an organization, you meet with the CEO, so you have lunch with the CEO. Everything at the end of the day is not a financial reward. Okay? Mm-hmm. I get happy okay, with small things in life as well. Okay? Let me, let's say if I'm having uh, the lunch, a lunch with my MD, uh, Sunil, okay? I get very, very happy about that. Okay? It's a recognition of that, yes, Anirban as a person is important to this organization. And that's where the self-identity also comes in along with the organization identity. I think. Okay, okay. Yeah, and apart from along with the identity, so while <coughs> uh, now you feel respected, you like the organization to work for, right? One of the things that probably makes uh, data scientists want to work for certain organizations is because it's not only related to data scientists, but anybody who's working in the tech, tech industry, in Bangalore for a person, they want to make a career, they have an end goal, they have a purpose. What is it uh, within what is it what is it that data science companies or data science functions for that matter can do to ensure that you know they uh, they they are they are direct, they are helped in that direction they are uh, they are kind of directed in a way that they can achieve their end goal their purpose it's a good point um, I'll, I'll, I'll go first because i only talked about amp i talked about purpose so, so i think a little bit of deeper time on that is required yeah see there are a couple of things one Purpose again for different individuals are different, right? But organizations also have a responsibility, particularly with younger people, to create that sense of purpose. So that sense of purpose don't come on day one. You you, you know pass out. So when you are in, let's go back a little bit. You are in college, right? What is your purpose to 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 finish your degree? 
to get a you know, kind of a good job or if somebody wants to do their higher studies. So your purpose is in one way. Now you have landed a job that you wanted and you get started. This purpose is also built over a period of time. It doesn't happen on your own. I feel that organizations have a responsibility to also create a sense of purpose that look, this is what your purpose should be and, and influence people. You know, it, it, it's not like, oh, you tell me your purpose, I, 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 I'll support you in making that happen. Okay. It, is, it is not, it, it is generally not, it should not be like that. I mean, some people can think that way, but I think it should not be like that. It should be that, okay, tell me your purpose. Oh, this is your purpose. Why are you not thinking it differently? Mm -hmm. right? your, your purpose is to you know do the most cutting edge model. I'm just, just taking an example from industry. A discussion happens. Yes, you should learn the latest technology. You should build a cutting edge model. But like what Anirban mentioned before, your goal should be, your purpose should be to create the maximum impact to your work. Mm -hmm. right? Are you thinking about that? Right? Your purpose should be that over this next X years, I'll create hundred million dollars of impact in this organization that I'm working for. Okay. Right? Yeah. So, so purpose has to also be modified or, or, or be, you know, kind of be with pe by people who have seen more, have done more. Right? Purpose can be uh, modified, purpose can be influenced. But yes, once you are engaging in that conversation, then it becomes almost imperative that you are already getting involved mm -hmm. in making somebody realize that purpose. You can't be just having that conversation and then let it be, okay, now you go and figure out what purpose. It, it, yeah. it, it will never work that way. What, what is that? Uh, again, there is uh, no disagreeing with you. So, I have a 40 year old son, okay? And I see his purpose in life is to somehow just be at home and play with his toys. Okay, he does not want to go attend online school. He does not want to go to his daycare. Just be at home. And, uh, and with age, the purpose changes, right? Uh, so, even for a person or an employee who, when they join an organization, okay, it is a balancing act, okay, and I would even call it as an art for an organization to actually make a balance between the organization's purpose and the employee's purpose, okay. Mm -hmm. Just saying that, okay, this is my vision, go follow it blindly, nobody does that. So, as an employee, you have to understand, okay, as an organization, you have to be empathetic for that employee to understand your vision, okay. Mm -hmm. Once both the two, once the two merges, I think it's a very good balancing act, okay? Where both of them are driving towards one common goal, okay? One going through its own personal purpose, the other one going through its organization purpose, okay? But at the end of the day, I think a lot of new members or uh, employees who join an organization feel disconnected because uh, organizations think that they have a different purpose. As me as a person, I think I have a different purpose. And getting them together at one point of time is very, very important. Otherwise, yeah, it's a great point. And, and only thing I will also add to it is, you know, it, it, it won't happen organically, it won't happen automatically. Okay. You know, the, the leaders, the mentors, whoever you want to call it, has to play an active role here. Mm -hmm. And that is where I find that in, in our world of you know, analytics, data science, Given that we are mostly head brain people, right? Mm -hmm. Some of these get missed up. I mean, see, most of the time, you know, the conversation, even with your manager, your leader, your mentor, is about the work that you know, kind of this is this is what it is. You know, kind of okay, I could have done a little bit more fine tuning. This treatment would have done better. Why did you do this model? Which is all important. But then, where is all this leading to? Like what Anirban said, like, what is my organization's goal and what is your goal? Or, what is your purpose? What is my omission purpose? How can I harmonize the two? Mm -hmm. right? That needs sit down, that is conversation in today's this world of when everybody is dispersed and working from different locations, it becomes even more important. Because there is no natural osmosis, right? There is nothing that we're all sitting together, we're talking about common topics, purpose get formed. Correct. Like like you think of your college days, right? If you get into college, you know, kind of a lot of friends come together. You may have a different purpose, but now through influence, mm. just by you know, kind of mingling with a group of friends, you start forming a different purpose. Mm. Mm. So this has to be done deliberately yeah. to, to, to you know, kind of get to the purpose part. Yeah, and I think, so just like taking this forward, right? So you're saying that there should be more involvement from the leadership to create purpose, along with money, identity and purpose, which we talked about, right? Or the AMP model for that, uh, for that matter. One of the things is that, 
when I, when I was discussing with a few of my colleagues, right, one thing came up that you can achieve money identity purpose, but at the same time not feel respected or have a uh, good uh, or feel valued. So one of the things is that how how do companies, especially for data scientists, develop good value quotient, right? So how does the how does the leadership develop a culture that that is more empathetic, which you were saying? You want to sure. take a shot? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I think it's important that uh, this people feel good about what they're doing. See, the, from the time you wake up in the morning, if you don't feel like driving to your office, taking a cab, coming to your office, or even opening your laptop, that means there is something wrong. Okay? It could be something wrong at your side, it could be something wrong at the organization side as well. Okay? But somehow that connection and the good at the end of the day, a good value field is not there. Okay, uh, the feel good factor is not there rather. Okay, I think one of the ways to connect all of the dots is giving a little bit of independence, okay, to the team members or to the employees to explore things outside of what an organization does. Okay, okay. it's okay for organizations to support team members to go and do a hackathon. Okay, there is a business impact, there is a project that creates business impact, there is an opportunity that can be created that, so that they can also enable their own self plan. So as organizations, we will have to come up, with, we have to be creative, okay, come up with supportive policies, be supportive to the employees to create and give a zone where they can also explore other things outside of what they are doing in the organization. Uh, passion is very, very important. Mm -hmm. If you are passionate about the analytics and the data sciences industry, a lot of people spend time in taking training courses. That's one of the things, okay? Organizations need to be supportive. Okay? Mm -hmm. But the flip side of the story is that you also need to be supportive to the organization. You always cannot say that, okay, I have taken an eight hour training course and because of that, my project is delayed. That's not creating good value. That's just creating good value for yourself. Yeah. Okay. That's not right. So a feel good factor is both from an individual standpoint as well as an organization standpoint where mm -hmm. both the employee needs to support that organization and vice versa. Yeah, yeah, it's a great point and I, 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 I take it to a slightly different uh, direction as well. This is one part, right, where you are feeling valued, you are, you know, kind of organization is feeling purpose for that. But one other, other aspect of your question, Ashok, that you know, how do you create that environment? How do you that value quotient? Quotient, that value quotient that people feel value? I think there is too much expectation on organization and leaders and externalities to create that value. Hmm. So I'll, I'll give you a very simple example, right? It's motivation. Okay. Now, you know, if you look at theory and then people who have done enough studies on you know, how minds work, human minds work, there is this whole concept of external motivation or intrinsic motivation okay and that is one aspect that we also have to focus on and cannot ignore the fact that you, you develop a value question people feel good about it there has to be an intrinsic feel good that has to come right okay. it, it is not about oh i am not getting respected for my work nobody is valuing my work you know, kind of that sometimes plays in our mind yeah but if, again, I'll go back to, you know, because Anupan also talked about creating some autonomy, right? people getting flexibility of doing things beyond just what my project work is. I feel good that, you know, I'm doing, I'm becoming better and better at my work. I'm taking some coursework. That is what I call it mastery. And I know that, you know, I'm driving, in, my purpose is to create this impact and I'm doing that direction. Now, if these all falls in place, they're all happy, I should feel good and valued you know and just just because of that I, I don't necessarily need to wait for somebody to come and say oh wow this is a great job done right so, so that is something that i would you know also point out that there is this whole external environment and there is something called intrinsic motivation mm -hmm. so people need to learn to use intrinsic motivation and, and leaders also needs to you know kind of tell people that look you know what is it internally that you're feeling you don't just look at this particular, you know, kind of feature being there or not. Yeah, but then, so this, this is this is something that intrinsically should come as well. But can organizations kind of 
create an environment or what can they do essentially to ensure that you know they also feel good about themselves plus the leadership also feels good that we have created a nice working environment right if yeah i can go so uh, i think leading by examples is very very important okay okay uh, as leaders uh, as organizations uh, if let's say a couple of leaders do it okay rather than just saying it that like, can i take a course for box blah 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 okay leading by examples is very very important because people see that okay there's a difference between perception okay it's been spoken about something being spoken about versus something which is visually there with you okay i think uh, in my own personal life i have been inspired and motivated by a lot of people and the moment i see them lead by examples i have that intrinsic motivation what uh, shyam was saying that if they can do it okay and i okay so i get that additional self drive in me okay uh, so organizations to create that good value uh, feel good factor can also lead by examples organization and the leaders within the organization can lead by examples uh, in my opinion yeah no that's a great point um nothing major to add but to your point just go back you know what can leaders do to create that environment where people yeah. feel valued i think the main thing that they can do is you know make people understand the value of what they are doing see it is like You know, there's a saying that if you want to be respected, please start respecting others. Okay. Right. Yeah. So, if you want to feel value, you create an environment where people can clearly see the value that my work is adding. So okay. it, it is. It is not about well, you know, kind of I create a great. Obviously, you create an environment which is you know open where people can exchange ideas and all of this. But for you to feel value, mm -hmm. you absolutely have to make sure that I am creating value. the moment and, and this is this is very deep right if i understand that i am creating value i automatically will start feeling that i am valued so it 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 goes in a very cyclical yeah. manner and and i'm i'm pointing this out because again many a times what we miss doing we leaders and i, I can take blame for that is that you know we put a lot of emphasis and focus on the work in hand well you know kind of i'm doing a generous in your model like i you know kind of get to look at great results you have used You know, this kind of technology this is the latest and greatest on fine but what value it added at the end of the day right for whoever is going to use that for the for the for the consumer of that work that i've done so if i can point people constantly in that direction constantly tell people what is this value that you are adding mm -hmm. i think i've seen people you know feeling you know quite valued quite charged up motivated you know nothing is not just let's go ahead and do it I think that's a great point, Shandeep, and uh, I think with that I would like to conclude. And I hope that employers in the industry, which is poised to play such an important role uh, in the coming decade or uh, in, even beyond that, uh, it helps employers to kind of develop organizations or be employers uh, that data science uh, data scientists want to work for. Uh, so thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Shandeep. Thank you, Alipal. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you.